right now at 6 a.m., more gun violence in New York City. Among the victims, a mother shot while walking with her kids. And we just got this new video of the getaway car. And we're live in Queens with the latest. Plus, high demand for the monkeypox vaccine with appointments filling up in minutes. We're going to tell you when the next big shipment is expected to arrive. And we're taking a live look outside. Very comfortable weather today. Don't get cozy with that. Storm Team 4's Violetta Yaz has your forecast, including some scorching heat in the 10 day. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Weekend Today in New York. I'm Gus Rosendale. And I'm Pat Battle. Glad to have you with us on this Saturday morning. Beautiful morning when I stepped out this morning at uh, 4 a.m. It was nice out. But what's it going to look like later? For that, we turn to Violetta Yas, the expert who's in for Raphael's. He continues his paternity leave. Hi, Val. Hey, good morning. Yes, we're off to a bit of a cloud start but it's feeling pretty comfortable out there so far temperature wise we're in the low 70s right now in midtown 73 at the moment our dew point 67 so that has come up a little bit but still uh, let's say tolerable our wind is calm so overall a pretty quiet morning but you can see those clouds starting to stream in from the west and we actually have a teeny tiny little shower that's popped up here up across Bergen County this moving through Wyckoff uh, Ramsey locally heavy rain there but that is it one tiny shower but that's going to be the case here through the course of today Day and actually in through tomorrow as well. Much of the time will be dry, but we can't rule out a passing shower or thunderstorm here as we head into the afternoon. So in the next couple of hours, we can expect more clouds than sunshine. Temperature wise will be uh, generally in the low 80s, so not feeling too hot either. Chance of showers and storms today, probably more likely as we head into Monday. We'll have a little bit more coverage with that as we head back to work on Monday. And then like us said, a big, a lot of heat in the forecast here as we head into the extended time frame. I'll have those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Pat Gus. Okay, bye. Thanks. Well, developing now in our top story this morning out in Queens, the search for a gunman who shot a mother who was out walking with her two little children. It happened on Mott Avenue in Far Rockaway. Weekend today, New York's Miles Miller is here live. And Miles, the NYPD just released some new video in connection with the shooting. That's right. Police are looking for the driver of an Acura MDX that was here around 645 yesterday when a woman was walking with her two children here at Mott Avenue and struck. Let's go ahead and show you that video police are looking for. This is a uh, video from uh, right down the street from where this happened. We know it was around 645 when a 28 year old woman and her five year old child, as well as a kid in the stroller who's two years old, were walking down Mott. Avenue here in Far Rockaway. Police say that a 44 year old man uh, was also in that same vicinity and was shot to the left arm. The mom also shot to her right arm. Both of them taken to Jamaica Hospital Medical Center in stable condition. Uh, and what we know is that uh, that individual uh, discharged that firearm towards the individuals. It's unclear if they were intended targets there, but we do know that they uh, fled on to Mott Avenue near Caffrey Avenue, and police are looking for whoever is responsible for that this morning. Uh, police here in the 101 precinct have uh, that video. They're hoping that it is provative. They're hoping that you may have seen what happened. You may know who was behind the wheel, and you'll give Crime Stoppers a call. That's the latest live in Far Rockaway. I'm Miles Miller. Weekend today in New York. Back to you. And Miles, new this morning, more gun violence in the city. Two men are shot. One of them killed after a shooting breaks out on Staten Island. It happened just before 1030 last night in the Park Hill neighborhood. Police say gunfire erupted in front of 55 Bowen Street, hitting a 44-year-old man and a 28-year-old man. Both were taken to the hospital, and the 44-year-old man did not survive. No arrests have been made. And Gus, a Chase Bank security guard fighting for his life after he was stabbed in the neck in the entrance of this building on the Upper East Side. It happened around 9 o'clock yesterday morning at the bank's 86th Street location. Police say a customer got upset when he tried to go into the bank before it opened. And he managed to make it inside, but a teller couldn't help him, gave him an 800 number to call. That's when police say a manager told the man to leave. And when the security guard came over to help, the customer stabbed him in the neck and took off running. And now to the fight against monkeypox. We're learning that the latest round of 9,000 appointments filled up yesterday in just seven minutes. And the next big vaccine shipment isn't expected until next week. Well, right now, there are only two vaccination sites in the city, one in Chelsea, the other in Harlem. But tomorrow, three mass vaccination sites are set to open in Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. 461 cases of monkeypox have been confirmed in the city now. Westchester County has the second most cases in the state so just 16. Several hospitals and community health centers are offering vaccines there as well. 
And on Long Island, monkeypox vaccines are now available on Fire Island in the Pines. The vaccination clinic also opened in Cherry Grove this week. Next week, 500 more doses of the vaccine will be made available in Bay Shore and Hampton Bays. Suffolk County has confirmed four cases of monkeypox. Nassau County has three. And if you want some more information about symptoms, cases, how to get your vaccination, please just go to NBCNewYork.com slash monkeypox, or you can download our free NBC4 New York app. The January 6th committee has subpoenaed the Secret Service over deleted text messages. The Homeland Security Inspector General says the Secret Service erased many of those messages from January 5th and 6th as part of a program to upgrade cell phones. The IG claims the messages were erased after his office asked for records of electronic communications. But the Secret Service says the IG didn't make that request until late February when the change was already underway. And it says none of the texts the IG was seeking had been lost. Secret Service policy forbids communicating by government text, so both officials and agents say there likely won't be much to find. The January 6th committee will hold its next hearing Thursday night at 8. It's expected to focus on former President Trump's failure to stop his supporters who stormed the Capitol. And you can watch it live at an NBC special report. Happening today, President Joe Biden continues his trip overseas and will lay out framework for America's engagement in the Middle East as he meets with nine leaders from that region. This comes after his controversial visit with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman yesterday. Biden told reporters he discussed the murder of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi at the top of their meeting. And the president said he pushed back on the Crown Prince's claim of innocence. I made my view crystal clear. I said very straightforwardly, for an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights is this consistent with, inconsistent with who we are and who I am. He basically said that he, uh, he, he was not personally responsible for it. I, I indicated I thought he was. Biden also urged Saudi to boost oil production in hopes of bringing down gas prices in the U.S. The president says we should see the impact of his visit in a couple of weeks. Happening down the nation is getting a new three-digit phone number for suicide prevention. Health and Human Services Secretary Xavier Becerra made that announcement yesterday in Philadelphia. So beginning now, if you call or text the numbers 988, you'll reach a mental health professional at the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Officials say they hope the three-digit number will be easier to remember, especially in times of crisis. And in Mawa, New Jersey, they are putting some restrictions on lawn watering into place because of all the heat and dry weather we've had. Under these restrictions, people who live in homes with an even-numbered address can water their lawns during the day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and odd-numbered addresses on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Watering banned for everybody all day on Sunday, and those restrictions went into place yesterday. Be advised. Governor Kathy Hochul is banning smoking at New York State beaches and parks. The law goes into effect in three months, covering beaches, boardwalks, marinas, playgrounds, rec centers, and group campgrounds. Anyone caught smoking in these areas will face a $50 fine. Parking lots and sidewalks of nearby areas are exempt, though, as are the Adirondack and Catskill Parks. In the city, the MTA is changing weekend overnight service on the Q line between Atlantic Avenue and Prospect Park to some maintenance work. Q trains will run on the N and D lines between Atlantic Avenue, Barclays, and Stillwell Avenue. Q shuttle trains and buses will operate between Prospect Park and Stillwell Avenue. And these changes will be in effect from 11.45 p.m. until 5 a.m. over the next five weekends. So the Museum of Tibetan Art is suffering a very special event tonight. Yeah, you can spend a night at the museum, just like in the movies. Yes. According to the invite, families, couples, singles, and anybody with an adventurous spirit can attend and spend the evening at the museum, which is located in the Richmond section of Staten Island, Richmond Hill section. Grab some free popcorn, enjoy watching the film, night at the museum. What else? Uh, guests can then sleep over, wake up to bagels, coffee, and juice. We talked to the museum's executive director. So we wanted a family type community event where we could get people together, uh, you know, not just to go to the museum and see it possibly for the first time, but also to, uh, you know, have some fun. And 
the tickets only cost $10. Guests are encouraged to bring their own pillows and sleeping bags. <laughs> and the Met Museum is showcasing artwork from New York City's youngest residents. PSR 2022 showcases paintings, photographs, sculptures, and other art from students in pre-kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. 122 pieces of work will be on display through October. The Met says the exhibit, now in its 15th year at the museum, is a testament to student creativity. And still ahead on this Saturday morning, the local golfer who's off to a great start in the British Open. Sure is. And in Brooklyn, the race has returned. We'll bring you up to speed on the Formula E race that is going on this weekend. Plus, did anybody win? We've got the numbers from last night's nearly half a billion dollar medical, 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 medical yeah, can't even say it, <laughs> mega millions drawing. <laughs> Much excitement. Uh -huh. Hopefully it's me. Well, con current conditions, temperatures are in the low 70s. It's a little cloudy out there. Can't rely on a passing shower or a thunderstorm here as we head into the afternoon. But coming up, we'll take a look at which of the next few days will be a little bit more active and also how quickly that scorching heat will return. I'll have those details coming up right here on Weekend Today in New York. Formula E race cars are going to be flying through the streets of Brooklyn starting today, but you won't hear a thing. Listen, all the cars are electric. Yeah, and all the action happening in Red Hook. The streets around the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal are being transformed into a Formula E circuit. 22 drivers are going to make that race to the finish line, and it's expected to make a $100 million economic impact on the city. Very cool. Yeah. Well, in his first ever British Open, this local golfer is making a move. He's doing great. Westchester's own Cameron Young is currently in second place, just two shots behind the leader. Young grew up at Sleepy Hollow Country Club. His father is the club's head pro, and his family lived in a house on the grounds. Yeah, he really grew up there. <laughs> the, the director of golf instruction says it was obvious that Cameron had a gift for golf. He's just a fun kid, loves activity, loves competition. Um, and that's kind of Cam. And there was always a kind of a confidence with him. You can always tell that he knew he was a good athlete. He wasn't arrogant or anything about it, but he just he was inwardly confident. <laughs> you can watch the Open this weekend right here on NBC4. Third round coverage begins this morning at 7 a.m. All right, go Cameron. Oh, turning out of baseball, the Yanks welcoming, if you will, <laughs> the rival Red Sox to the Bronx. Boston got on the board early yesterday. Rafael Devers crushes one to center field. The Red Sox took a 2 0 lead. Now, still down two in the third. Giancarlo Stanton changed that with one swing, driving a three run shot to right field. The Yanks lead it 3 2. But fast forward to the ninth. Yankees down one. They got even on this errant throw, and it was on to extra innings. Oh. And in the 11th, the Red Sox took the lead on a wild pitch, and the Yankees couldn't put up any more runs. They lost a tough one, five to four. Well, round two in the Yankees Red Sox series is tonight, and Metro North has added some extra trains and service. Tonight, eight southbound Hudson Line trains are going to make extra stops at Yankee Stadium, and there'll be a Yankee Clipper train to and from the stadium on the Hudson, the Harlem, and the New Haven lines. And for tomorrow afternoon's game, there will also be some added service on all three lines. They know that's a big one. Well, it is good news if you didn't get a ticket, Violetta. The Mega Millions jackpot has jumped to $513 million. That's my best Yolanda Vega invitation. <laughs> oh, my God. That's um, a good one. Nobody matched all six numbers in last night's drawing. And while nobody hit the jackpot, a lot of players won smaller prizes, small as a million dollars. You want to check your ticket anyway. Here are the winning numbers. 8, 20, 26, 53, 64, and the Mega Ball number is 15. Exactly what I would have picked. <laughs> exactly what I would pick. So cool. that much. Dude. Exactly. Yeah, hopefully I can get out and get a ticket today. Get it next yeah. time. The weather number's looking very nice this morning. Yes, yeah, so very, very nice temperatures in the 70s, so it's feeling nice and comfortable out there. We could use a little more sunshine, I think, mm. but uh, can't win them all, right? And certainly, probably not the drawing either. <laughs> uh, so we're going to keep things cloudy here over the next couple of hours. We are at 73 degrees right now in Brooklyn, 70 in Staten Island, the Bronx also in the low 70s. 
our wind is calm and we are generally seeing rain free conditions as well generally but we do have one little teeny tiny shower moving through uh, parts of New Jersey out ahead of this little disturbance. You can see this moving out of the Ohio Valley producing some showers and uh, some thunderstorms as well from Ohio down into parts of West Virginia and you can actually see that cloud cover streaming in out ahead of that. So I think it's going to start to get more humid through today and certainly for tonight not expecting too much rain today. I can't rule out a shower or a thunderstorm. We're, of course, in the dog days of summer now, so we start to get into these patterns where much of the time is dry, but with enough instability present, you can see a shower or a storm pop up almost out of nowhere, which is exactly what happened right here. You can see this developing here right around Wyckoff, uh, just uh, north of 287 that drifting northward here over the next couple of hours, but really that's all the rain we're talking about at this hour. But through the afternoon and evening, we could see maybe a few more of those, a pop up shower or thunderstorm, though most of the time will be dry. Heading into Sunday morning, we keep things cloudy, maybe some patchy fog as well, as humidity will be increasing through the night. Then by the afternoon, again, I think it's just more clouds than sunshine with a pop-up shower or two. Here's 10 o'clock tomorrow night, a little storm there right around the city, but elsewhere keeping things dry. By Monday morning, I think we'll have a little bit more coverage, more numerous showers, and potentially some storms that could produce some locally heavy rain as well. And I did want to point out, we are actually in need of that rain. We've got at least a moderate drought here across New England, severe drought, not too far from Boston, but uh, locally abnormally dry. And until we start to get some more substantial rain, we'll probably see that increase over the course of the next week. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Temperature wise, it's looking moderate low to mid 80, so not too far from normal today, tomorrow, and even into Monday. We're going to have to enjoy that because take a look at these numbers, low to mid 90s beginning on Tuesday. So that will bring us another heat wave. And this one, of course, a little bit more pronounced with those temperatures uh, quite a bit above those 90 degrees. So a lot of heat in the extended 10 day. We'll need to enjoy these moderate temperatures and aside from the cloud cover, maybe passing shower or storm today. It's overall not looking too bad here for the next couple of days. Pat, Gus. All right, Violetta, heat wave on the way. Thanks for the heads up. And happening tonight at City Field, the Dead & Company's charity auction ends with the band's last summer tour stop. This special guitar played by Bob Weir is headlining the auction with bids topping a quarter of a million dollars. It's a one of a kind from New York City based the Angelico and features the artwork of contemporary artist and Grateful Dead poster collector AJ Maste. Well, we will know the final price after tomorrow night's show. You know it'll be high. Proceeds will go to the nonpartisan voter registration group Headcount, the environmental organization Reverb, and a dozen other nonprofits. And still ahead on this Saturday morning, Produce Beats going to tell us all we need to know about string beans, yes, including how you can store them for up to six months. You're watching Weekend Today in New York. On this day in history, 53 years ago, Apollo 11 lifted off from Cape Kennedy on the first manned mission to the surface of the moon. It took the crew, Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin, several days to make that trip. Armstrong and Aldrin made the giant leap for mankind, walking on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Also on this day in 1790, then President George Washington signed the Residence Act into law. That law gave him the power to select a permanent capital for the United States somewhere on the Potomac River. For that area, of course, now known as Washington, D.C., was officially designated the U.S. Capitol a few months later on January 24, 1791. The first capital was here in New York. That's right. And we are talking about string beans on this Saturday morning. And here's a fun fact for you. It's not actually vegetable, says Produce Pete. It's a fruit. How do you do? And what? there are many different ways to consume this fruit. You could eat it raw. You can steam, boil, bake it. The, the options are endless. Here's <laughs> Produce Pete with more. Hey, good morning. Well, what could be better than to be at Farm View Farm in Wayne, New Jersey, on a beautiful day? And what am I doing? Well, I'm picking string beans. Why? Because I want string beans for my dinner tonight. That's exactly right. So I picked a bushel here, string beans, already. And you can see already that there's plenty on the plant here. And I'm telling you, they're absolutely terrific. Now, why do they call them string beans? Well, they actually are, years ago, what they did was the string bean itself had a a, 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 a rind or a line going through it. And the, the line that went through it was the string that was in it. 
So that's why they call them string beans. Now what they did was they bred that string out of there. So there's no more string in there. So now the bush beans, people call them, uh, you know, a lot of different, different types of beans. But I'm telling you, if you're looking for a good bean, these are really, really good. Full of vitamin K. And vitamin K is good for you because it's good for your bones, it's good for your good system. Now when buying beans, what you want to do is you want to look for that nice silkiness on the outside. You want the bean to be like four to six inches long. Now the best beans are always beans that are picked the beginning of the uh, winter, the beginning of the summer, and the beginning of the fall. That's when you get those velvety, really, really good beans and the beans that are good. Now a lot of people call beans what? Snap beans. And why? Because when you do this, they snap and that's why they're really, really good. Now I told you, if you pick too many beans, what can you do to keep the beans? Well, it's really, really simple. You boil some water and for two minutes you put the beans in it. Then you take the beans out and put it in ice cold water for two minutes and then you put it in a Ziploc bag. And you know how long those beans will last? If when you put them in the freezer, up to six months. So you'll have fresh beans all, all winter long. And I'm telling you, they're absolutely terrific. I'm Produce P reminding you, if you eat right, you're gonna live right. And I'm telling you, string beans, they're out there, they're available, and they're one of the summer bounties. <laughs> Man, I'm and if you have any questions about string bean recipes or anything else, just email Pete at this address. It's produce.pete at NBCUNI.com. We're coming right back. be a wayward dolphin flipping and mm. swimming in a Connecticut River. Whoa. Fisherman first spotted it Thursday and then again yesterday along the Thames River near the Norwich Marina. The dolphin swam upstream about 15 miles from Long Island Sound. A rescue tech at Mystic Aquarium says it's unusual but not unheard of and she <laughs> hopes the dolphin will eventually find its way back to the sound. Mm. Oh, Looks like she's having a good time. <laughs> really does. Does. Well, I mean, <laughs> she doesn't want to go back. Right? <laughs> Love it. Uh, indeed. Indeed. Uh, so good weather today for uh, getting in the water somewhere? Yes, I think uh, we're not going to see a ton of sunshine. Probably clouds will stick with us through the afternoon, but any showers and storms will be pretty isolated, so uh, we're not expecting it to be a washout by any means. Temperature-wise, okay. in the low 80s, so again, not too bad. Uh, tomorrow actually looks pretty similar. Maybe a pop-up shower or a storm. Monday, a little more stormy before that heat returns in the middle of the week. Mm, we need some rain. Yes, we yeah. are getting there. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, bye. All right, and thank you for spending this part of your Saturday morning with us, folks. We've got to leave you a little early. Short in time, but certainly not in quality. <laughs> Thank you for having us in for news. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 5.30. Your world. Every night. The tri-state. And farther away. The stories we're all living through. And the changes they bring. All in one place. What police are saying tonight. Your World. News for New York. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Here together every night.